Vector databases are getting extremely popular and they are here to stay. Let me tell you why we need another type of database when we already have so many. I think the first reason is that modern AI made it so easy to do a very complicated task, which is to understand which objects are similar to other objects. Let me show you an example. I guess most of you already know that, but you can take any photo and drop it into Google and Google will show you similar images to this photo. See, this is the original photo and those are the similar photos. So really quickly, let's just talk in two sentences how you can use vector databases to create something like this. So the backbone of all of this is something called embedding. Embedding is taking a very, very large dimensional data like all the words possible and building a space that groups similar words and meanings together. In this case, we can see that the weekday words are grouped together. Most of the time, it's not going to be three dimensional. It's going to be thousands of dimensions. Of course, we are not doing it by hand. We're going to build some algorithm that orders the data in a meaningful way. I think the simplest example of something that can order our data where similar objects are closer together is an autoencoder. Autoencoder is just a neural network that takes some input and each layer it kind of tries to compress it to represent it with fewer neurons until you, we get into a very very small layer and then we going to try to get from this small layer back to our original data and we calculate the loss by the difference between the output layer and the input layer so why is it useful it's useful because the middle layer can learn to represent this very 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 high dimensional data like an image or a word in a very very small dimensional space a latent representation a lot of time what is done is we discard everything after this very, very small layer. And we just use it to encode the data into an embedding space. So of course you don't need to train your own models to do that. You can use pre-trained models like the OpenAI embedding model. It's very cheap and very powerful and you can use any API. So now let's get to how we can use that to create a search engine or a recommendation system or anything that we can use uh, vector databases for. What Google is doing when we give it an image and it returns a lot of similar images, it's just taking our image, passing it through like some embedding model to, to get the point in the space and then finding all the other images that are closer together in the space, in the embedding space. But now is the main question, why don't we use any old traditional database to do it, to just store the embedding vector of the image and try to get similar vectors, similar points in the space of other images. Why do we need a new type of database? Well, the simple answers and pretty much the whole answer is that traditional databases are not optimized to represent data as large dimensional vector, like a point in a very, very high dimensional space not a three dimensional, not four dimensional, a thousands dimensional space, like a lot, a lot of numbers. It's not optimized to retrieve closer points in that space. And this is why we can see this graph, the explosion of popularity of vector databases. A lot of companies like Google need to query huge amount of data to find the closest images. Like when we query the image, when we do the reverse image search, Google needs to go over so many images and it can't just use any old database. It has to be specialized to this task. And vector databases are here to do one task and do it very well, which is to find close embeddings. That's it. But if you think about it, it's extremely useful because when you have so many vectors that represents the meaning of data, you can build stuff like search engines. You can embed text and then go over so many other texts, which is what vector databases are good for, and just create a very high quality search engine in this way. You can create recommendation systems. Like YouTube hopefully recommended you this video, and the reason it knew that you are going to like this video 
hopefully you did like, if, if you did press the like button, is that it looked over your watch history and the videos that you liked previously and it tried to find a similar video in uh, some embedding space and finding videos that are similar to videos you previously liked. You previously watched a lot, you previously liked a lot of, yeah. But not every time you store embeddings, you should use a vector database. If you just have a small amount of data you query each time, you just use a traditional database. Vector databases are useful for, for when you have tons of data you need to query each time and you want to do it in a scalable and fast way. If you just have like chatbot messages, like you have 100 messages, 100 messages are still not always going to be more beneficial to use vector database for. It might be better to do it with, I don't know, Firebase or something. And because this field is changing so fast, I don't want to recommend a specific vector database. Currently, Pinecone is extremely popular because it's fully managed and yeah, you can set it up very easily. One more thing is that there is a product I'm building and I would be very happy to hear your feedback about it. It's just a WhatsApp bot that acts as your mentor and it can help you find goals and split them into tasks that you can do daily and help you achieve your goals. You don't need to pay for anything, you don't need to watch any ads, just your feedback. Your feedback is the value I'm getting from it. So I think I'm going to keep this video short, hopefully it is short. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to press the like button and consider watching other videos I made in the channel down below and if you like more than one video, consider subscribing. Yeah, that's it. Hopefully you gain some value from this video. Hopefully you learn something and hopefully you're going to use that knowledge to build something good in this world. See you in the next video. Bye bye.